Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and today I'm going to give you an answer for these two objects. As you know I do like uh, archaeology and I asked a question uh, on Friday of what two of my finds were. They're both 17th century and I know what they are but I wanted to see if anyone out there knew what they were. So these are the two objects that I chose. They're both original. Uh, we have this one, which, as I mentioned, could be a child's cup and saucer. It's made out of lead, by the way. And it has two little ears either side. And the other item uh, actually has uh, a spout, uh, like a little cone on the top. And as I mentioned, it has a hole going all the way through. So this is lead also. And the answer is, because there's a couple of people that got it right, the answer is they are tops from uh, a 17th century military bandolier. Now, a bandolier is this belted item just of here. And the problem is, throughout history, they have been known incorrectly, especially by the Victorian era, as a set of apostles. And the reason for that is because there are 12 wooden bottles. And because people's assumed that in the 17th century, everyone was fanatical, everyone was Puritan, say, then surely they must have made that link that the bottles, as 12 of them, would mean they must have been called apostles. Unfortunately, they were never, ever called apostles until much later in history. Um, the bandolier was usually referred to as a bandolier. I've all, also heard it called a collar. Uh, I've also heard it called uh, a, settle, a set of boxes. I've also heard it called a set of bottles. I've heard those names before, a collar of bottles, a bandolier, but unfortunately the word apostles do not exist. Now, a bandolier was very important because as a musketeer in, for example, the Civil War, but they were around before the Civil War, uh, you had to carry this um, as as a musketeer, this is the only way of carrying your gunpowder. I say it's a safe way of carrying gunpowder. It's probably not the safest thing to do. Strapping black powder, strapping gunpowder around your body. But it's safer than, for example, having it stuffed in pockets. And yes, people did have pockets in the 17th century. Now, on the strap that runs from the left shoulder to the right hand hip, you have 12 wooden Bottles, bottles, boxes, charges, never apostles. And as you can see from the top, there is a piece of lead with little ears. And that's because the lid is held on the string so you don't lose it. And the reason for the lead tops is because when wood gets wet, the wood will swell and you will, to a certain degree, struggle removing the top. So lead tops were pretty common. And that's why we do find them on battlefields. Probably because someone's been hit with a sword. Or maybe the strings just come undone when the army are marching. And the bottle top falls on the floor and becomes archaeology. So these things are found. So we, def we definitely know that these were used in the 1640s. Um, each one contains enough gunpowder for one shot only. So you've only got 12 shots. Now, I fire a 17th century matchlock musket and I will bring it into a video at some point in the future. And the interesting thing about it is if you're fighting in a body of troops and if you look back at an earlier video that I did about the Civil War infantry, they usually fire in lines. You very rarely just get the order to just fire it will. Most of the time, it's very structured, very ordered. And there are about 39, depending on the drill manual, 39 individual orders to load and fire a musket. So there's quite a few. So if you can imagine you're loading your musket, you will fire it eventually. 
it may be another 30 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour before you get to fire it again. So when you say 12 shots, or when we think 12 shots is not enough, actually there's plenty of gunpowder there. Personally, you don't want to be carrying more than 12 shots strapped to your body, to be fair. You'd go up like a firecracker. But I also showed you a bottle top with a spout on it. Now, we do carry a 13th bottle on a bandolier. And the 13th bottle always hangs below the pouch. And as you can see, there is a spout at the top. That was referred to as the priming bottle sometimes referred to as a priming flask however a priming flask is actually uh, another device altogether so a priming bottle and whereas the powder in your bandolier is pretty coarse gray and as i described to children it looks very much like gray because they say black powder is more gray uh, looks more like gray sugar the powder in your powder uh, bottle is usually finer grain so if you're going to compare it, it looks more like gray salt so the grain is much smaller smaller grain um, powder ignites quicker and you need that delay when you fire a musket so if you ever see a musket fired you get a flash in the pan and then you get the bang so it's flash bang that's how a musket fires so the lead tops that I showed you archaeological finds are in fact evidence that there were musketeers either marching through an area, walking through an area, fleeing through an area, or it shows there was a battle and these were being used on that battlefield and for some reason has ended up scattered on the floor. People often ask me the question, uh, especially when I do a battlefield tour at Worcester, why are they not finding swords in armour over at Poic or around the city centre? The simple answer is, after a battle, all these things are stripped, they're taken off the dead and are actually reused. Uh, cannonballs, for example, can actually be reused. A solid lump of iron doesn't change shape. So people were stripped of everything. Bodies, when they were thrown into mass burial pits, usually just had a shirt on, that's it. Even the shoes were stripped off the dead. So you're not really going to find that much. However, with tiny bottles coming out or coming off from a bandolier, um, the bottle tops, things like that, will be lost in the grass, for example, and then eventually got tread in to the mud, ploughed through, and will be lost forever until an archaeologist finds them. So this bandolier is a replica of the type that was used during the Civil War. I do also have a blue bandolier, which sounds a bit odd, but they were issued to the New Model Army from around about 1645 onwards. We do have contracts uh, talking about them being painted blue and the interesting thing then is the linen cord is also blue and white so it's plaited blue and white and this was just going to show how the new model army formed by Sir Thomas Fairfax and also Oliver Cromwell were trying to standardise everything in this new so-called standing army that Britain didn't have. You have to remember we had no standing army really until 1645. Uh, we just relied the early part of the Civil War on militias or trained bands, soldiers that were raised for an action and then disbanded after the fight. Um, on a bandolier, however, you do have a couple of other little things. Um, we have a pouch, the leather pouch, which actually has a leather, uh, uh, which has a lead button on it. We do find these in archaeological remains as well. Um, houses your bullets which are usually believe it or not referred to as shot and they are made of lead and they're pretty big things I always say they are a bit like Maltesers but should never be eaten however saying that it is believed we've not got thousands and thousands of bits of evidence for this that sometimes soldiers shake them by chewing on the lead uh, they say that's where the saying comes from, biting the bullet. Um, some people say biting the bullet actually comes from the fact surgeons put them in people's mouths to bite down on in pain. Personally, I don't believe that one at all. Before muskets were standardised by people like the New Model Army, a lot of musketeers found that the bullets did not fit perfectly in the barrel. So they probably did chew them to fit to a certain degree. We will never know for sure. But lead musket balls, as I said, start life 
pretty round, uh, grey in colour, and by the time they've been in the ground, they go a whitish colour, and, uh, you know, they don't look like lead straight away. But the other thing we have on our bandolier, as well as a shot bag, is an oil bottle, and we see lots of drawings of these showing oil bottles being carried just to oil over the moving parts of the musket. Not necessarily the barrel, you would need a lot more oil in that case, but just to oil over the lock, the moving part, the serpent. Um, and you also have the equivalent of what they had in the artillery. In the artillery, they used um, a priming iron. Uh, or a spike which was used to make sure the touch hole was clear of debris well on a musketeer's bandolier there is also a little spike for clearing out the touch hole in the pan so as a musketeer you would have to wear this it's the only way of carrying your gunpowder and when ordered you would load your musket some of these we believe from drawings even had a flap over the top just to protect them from the weather because obviously this is carrying gunpowder and wet gunpowder does not work whatsoever. Now, before we finish the video, the last few days I've been showing you how to support Discover History. And you can support us by buying, for example, the uh, Worcester Story booklet. You can even go out there, uh, let us know, and you can buy our walkabout guide to Worcester. One final uh, advertising uh, plea is we do sell our walkabout guides, or shall I say walkabouts, um, vouchers. So if you know anyone that would like a walk around Worcester after the complete lockdown is finished, you can buy these from us. And do let us know if you want them. Uh, you can contact us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or email. Let us know and we can put these in the post for you. All the details is on our website at www discover-history.co.uk. Stay safe. See you soon. Bye-bye.